Happy Thanksgiving everyone. Today I want to talk about how hedge fund short sellers have just lost $43 billion. These shorts have been shorting the wider market, high short interest stocks, and stocks like AMC and GameStop. And a major bank may be about to fail. So stay tuned and let's make some money. I've also got a big announcement about halfway through the video, so be sure to stick around for that. But for now, let's dive straight in with the key information. So, we can see from this article, it says that hedge fund short sellers suffer $43 billion of losses in the market rally. It says many of these hedge fund managers have been caught out in a painful rally as investors bet on quicker interest rate cuts. It says hedge funds betting on a decline in the US stock markets have suffered an estimated $43 billion of losses in a sharp rally over recent days. Many of these short sellers have been caught out by a painful rebound in low quality stocks. By low quality stocks, they mean stocks with a high short interest. Many of these stocks or companies have been exposed to higher borrowing costs over the past year or so, and many of their profits have been decreasing. That's why their short interest is so high. Stocks like Affirm, Upstart, Carvana, Coinbase, and many others. But also remember, many of those stocks that are highly shorted, just shorted indirectly through ETFs and not directly through the stocks itself, are stocks like GameStop and AMC as well. These shorts are all shorting this big basket of stocks. So when these shorts get stressed on some of their positions, like in Upstart, Carvana, Coinbase, and others, the entire fund is being stressed. And if it does cause that fund to be liquidated, they need to close all of their short positions. Not just the shorts in Upstart and Carvana, but also the shorts in Coinbase, GameStop, and AMC too. Analysts have said the upswing triggered a brutal short squeeze in the market in which some hedge funds repurchased their shorts to cover their negative bets. And obviously that helped push share prices even higher. And that's also something I've touched on before, and I said when these hedge funds are stressed, the first thing they do is cover their short positions in tech stocks. Then they start closing short positions in those highly shorted names before finally closing shorts in AMC and GameStop, the most risky for the funds to close. Now we know many of these shorts might be closing shorts in those highly shorted names like Upstart and Carvana, but haven't yet started closing shorts in AMC and GameStop as those prices are still suppressed. But obviously as this market rally continues, these shorts will get more and more and more stressed to the point they're forced to close. Cow, who I think is a hedge fund manager, said it's been a very tricky market this year, but this short squeeze is really killing year-end performance for a lot of funds. No one was able to monetize the rally in garbage stocks. As a result, Charles Payne quoted that article saying, guys, keep it coming, let's cause even more losses to these short sellers. And Vaughan tweeted saying, I'm literally expecting to hear of either the close of a notorious hedge fund or possibly the collapse of a major bank at any moment. The signs and smell of death are everywhere. And Hang Loose has said it looks like it might even be Citibank. $70 billion in security sold and not yet purchased alone over the last 52 weeks is insanely over leveraged. His previous tweet says in just the last year alone, City has sold $70 billion worth of synthetic shares. Saying that means they collected $70 billion from investors by selling something they don't own and haven't yet purchased and are keeping that money to themselves. We can see here in 2022, Citibank had security sold not yet purchased as a net balance of $37.9 billion. But in September 30th of 2023, so about a year later, that figure had jumped to $109 billion. So over $70 billion in security sold not yet purchased or $70 billion in security shorted and not closed out of. I also wanted to let you guys know that I'm currently holding a Thanksgiving sale on the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group. We don't celebrate Thanksgiving over here in the UK, and I don't know if you guys celebrate Thanksgiving with sales, but either way, we're having a sale. A lot of you have been waiting to join the team until next month because Patreon bills on the first of every month. But if you join the team at any time in the next week or in the next seven days, I'll refund that December payment so you're basically getting five weeks for the price of four, or you're getting that last week of November entirely for free. 
Obviously, we didn't have any trades this morning as it's Thanksgiving, but over the last week, we've had some great fast moving plays and some great options trades as well. And the team has been absolutely killing it and raking in those profits. And you may also know that Citibank has just announced its second round of job cuts. They previously fired 7,000 staff and now they plan on firing tens of thousands. Citibank are literally shredding between 10 and maybe 20, 25% of their entire workforce over the next couple of weeks. If this doesn't spell desperation, I don't know what does. Rat Toy and Dario also tweeted this really interesting JP Morgan ETF with a massive amount of FTDs. As Rat Toy points out, the FTDs in this ETF are more than a float. You can see from this screenshot, the ETF, which is trading around $50 per share, has in total 18 million shares outstanding. But last month on the 3rd of October, in one singular day, had 18.066 million FTDs in just one day. Now that's not $18 million worth of FTDs, that's $835 million worth of FTDs or 18.066 million shares. So in one singular day, they literally managed to FTD the entire float and an extra 66 million shares on top of that. And this also really interestingly links into my video from yesterday, where I spoke about how these hedge funds had learned from Gabe Plotkin's mistakes and weren't shorting AMC directly to present a massive short interest. They were shorting AMC ETFs. Obviously, we know the FTDs in AMC stock has gone down over the last month or two, but I wonder what those FTDs on the AMC ETFs are doing. If I had to take a guess, I imagine those FTDs on those AMC ETFs are at sky high levels. Tony Denaro also tweeted saying, for those who care, the AMC BDRs or Brazilian Depository Receipts in Brazil are delisted as of October 10th. Now, while that's good that another thing related to AMC synthetic shares has been closed down, A, it's not happening fast enough, and B, it should have never been allowed to happen at the start. Obviously, FTX's tokenized securities are gone, Binance's tokenized securities are gone, Bittrex's tokenized securities are gone, and now these Brazilian BDRs are gone too. Obviously, that still leaves the Bitpanda tokenized securities, it still leaves the total return swaps, and it still leaves those single stock short AMC ETFs that those hedge funds are using to manipulate AMC and create even more synthetic shorts. As I said, it's good these items are being closed down, but it's bad these ones still remain and were ever created at the start. And as I was reading through this tweet from Tony Denaro, it really does come full circle because the custodial bank for these Brazilian BDRs was Citibank, who, by the way, have just created $70 billion in security sold, not yet purchased. Now you may be saying, Tom, I know these hedge funds are losing money in the market, but with the SEC and the Department of Justice on their side, how can we be confident these shorts will lose? And I saw this tweet from retail stocks that I thought was absolutely brilliant. He tweeted saying, well, put it this way, Jim Chanos never thought he would lose. Sam Bankman-Fried thought he was invincible. CZ thought he could play by his own rules. And Credit Suisse thought they could do as they wished. Iceberg, Arkegos, and all of those other hedge funds that have also collapsed. And the list goes on. He said apes are undefeated. And one by one by one, these hedge funds are collapsing. You cannot deny many hedge funds have already collapsed, but yes, there are still some left to fall. But one thing they all have in common is that Iceberg, Arkegos, and all of those other hedge funds, and even Jim Chanos's, they never thought they would be the ones to lose, but ultimately, they've all lost. He said the price is the final confirmation of the final hedge fund going under, and it will come one day soon. But that's just his opinion. As I've been saying, I can only wait until the next hedge fund collapses. I wonder which one it's going to be. And I wonder how much space Biotech Moose has left on his wall of collapsed hedge funds. And if he's going to have to create a second wall, if many more hedge funds end up failing over the next few weeks and few months. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell, because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.